Welcome to this yoga flow for the Sacral Chakra. Our Sacral Chakra, or Svadhisthana, is the second of our seven chakras, and it is located in our lower abdomen, in our pelvic area, the area of our reproductive organs. It is the seat of our emotions and of our creativity, and it is related to pleasure, sensuality, and freedom of expression. It is associated with the element of water. So in today's practice, we want to cultivate this quality of fluidity and aliveness and relieve any blockages that we might hold in the area of our hips and relieve any emotional and creative blocks that might hold us back or restrict us. For today's class, it would be great if you have one yoga block or a rolled up blanket or a rolled up cushion for some support. But even if you don't find anything right now, it's totally okay. I will show everything without the props. My name is Yeni and I'm a passionate yoga and meditation instructor and I can't wait to flow with you today. Please take a moment to subscribe to my channel and then hop into something comfy and then let's meet on the yoga mat and let's get started. So let's begin in a wide-legged child's pose. So we come onto all fours, we take the big toes to touch and take the knees wide all the way to the edges of the mat and then we send the hips back onto the heels, rest the upper body down towards the ground, release the forehead onto the mat. If the forehead doesn't quite reach, you can support it with the forearms or with a prop. And then just take a moment to settle into this moment. Close your eyes or rest the gaze. And then let your hips become heavy, sink deep into the groins. We take three cleansing breaths here to arrive on our yoga mat, in through the nose and out through the mouth. So go ahead and empty your lungs all the way out. Inhale deeply through the nose. And then open the mouth and gently sigh it out. Very good. Let's do two more. Inhale through the nose. And exhale. Let the hips sink a bit deeper. Settle into this moment. One more. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, let it all go. And then for a moment, release the breath. Let it flow naturally. And just scan with your attention through the body. If you're holding any tension somewhere. If you're feeling any kind of stimulation. Whatever you encounter, just observe for a moment without trying to change anything or give any value to it. Just begin to connect with your body here. And then breathe deep down into the belly. Start to guide your breath all the way down into the groins. And from that lower belly, exhale everything out. We begin to establish a smooth, equal breath, maybe ujjayi, so you narrow the back of your throat gently to create a soft hissing sound. It sounds a bit like the waves of the ocean. If this doesn't feel right for you today, you can just breathe naturally. And then on your next inhale, come up onto all fours and then let the hips drop forward a little bit. You can bring the lower legs parallel to each other and you can take it very easy here. We begin to circle around the hips and we're just beginning the practice. So no need to drop the hips all the way down depending on how your lower back feels today. Just begin drawing circles with your hips. And it doesn't quite matter which way you go or how big or how smooth the small the movement is for now. Just begin to arrive in the body and in your hip joints and just see how with this movement maybe there's some softness spreading in the body. Maybe you can even go a bit further down with the hips. But again, this is just the moment of arrival. Don't stress about it. 
Feel free to close the eyes or rest the gaze down. And just explore a little bit how your body feels today. And then from here, pull the knees a bit closer in so they land underneath your hip joints. Lower legs parallel. Now the knees are rather under the hips, so hip distance apart. And then press yourself away from the ground for a cat stretch, kin into the chest, lift the pubic bone to the navel. And then on the inhale, drop the belly, send the heart forward, gently curve your back. Do this a couple of times to warm up the spine, exhaling, rounding the back in your cat stretch. And inhaling, opening up the chest, the heart forward, the chin lifts, the tail lifts. Again, exhaling, rounding, leading from the tail, ripple the spine. And inhale, open up into your soft back bend. And then feel free to close your eyes again for a moment and begin to leave this linear movement of this cat-cow stretch and maybe circle the upper body one way or the other. Just again, use that moment to listen to your body and begin to allow yourself to move freely. Nobody's watching you, so just follow this, the impulses of your body. It tells you what it needs and begin to move smoothly, bending, whatever needs bending, stretching, whatever needs stretching. This is a moment of free expression for you to explore the body, the areas of tension, the areas of space, whatever it is that you find. Just take a little moment for that. And then again, slowly find your way back into that cat stretch round the back. We take the right knee into the chest, nose and knee towards each other. And then on the next inhale, open up the chest, lift the right leg up for a tiger stretch. The knee can stay bent. And then exhale round the back, draw the knee and the navel towards each other. We do this with the breath, inhaling, opening up space, lifting the leg in one straight line. And exhaling, grounding down through the hands and coming into the core. Inhale, open up, create space. And exhale, become stable and strong. Fluid movement, one more. Inhale, open up, tiger stretch. And exhale, rounding the back. Now stay here. Come onto the fingertips of the right hand and move the hand out of the mat. We begin to circle that right knee in the air beginning to really getting into those hip joints, drawing big circles into the air. Keep going, I will show the other side, just in case you didn't see very well. We really want to explore our hip joints here. So pull the knee in, open up wide behind you. And maybe you even want to extend your leg and see what your hip joint can do. Again, this is a moment of exploration. There is no right or wrong. I'm going back to my right side, you're still there. And then circle the other way around as well. And if your hips feel stiff, don't strain. The movements don't have to be really big. You just have to be conscious. And you just wanna see what's actually there. Maybe you can actually open the hip a bit wider. All right. And then bring the knee up to the chest again. Come onto the fingertips of the left side again as well, and then step the right foot forward. Now walk the foot forward till you can drop the hips deep, knee over ankle, stay on the fingertips and begin to circle around that right ankle. So you're drawing circles with that right knee. And again, we're opening up the hip joints, really just arriving in here. And you know, as I said, the Sakra Chakra is associated with the element of water. So throughout this practice, try to find this quality of fluidity, of flow. Circle the other way around as well. So we never want to strain or resist or force. We just go with the flow and find the softness. Good. Send the hips forward, knee over ankle, pull the right heel back, the left knee forward for strong legs, and then reach the upper body up, sweep the arms up. If you need some cushioning, you can wrap your mat around underneath the left knee. Good. Again, inhale, fingertips up to the sky. And the next, I bring the hands behind the body, interlace all 10 fingers, open up the chest here for some space. 
Keep the pelvic floor active, the legs active. We inhale into the chest. And we exhale, let the stress go. Good, inhale, send the arms up one more time, fingertips towards the sky. And exhale, hands down to the ground, pull the hips back. So you can bring the right knee next to the left one for your quadruped. And then again, push away from the ground for your cat stretch, left knee into the chest. Inhaling for your cat tiger stretch, opening up. Fluid movement, exhale, round, engage the core. And inhale, open up. Good. Exhale, round. Inhale, create space. Exhale with control, no rush here. Again, as if you were moving through water. Inhale, open up. And then exhale, knee to the chest. Give yourself some space by coming onto the fingertips of the left hand and moving them out of the mat and start circling your hips. Big, big movements. Good. All right, again, let me correct. It don't have to be big, just conscious. Explore what your hip can do. Maybe you want to straighten the leg out. Maybe you don't. Maybe you rather keep it a bit easy in the beginning if you feel stiff in the hips. Just explore your hip joints. And then circle the other way around as well. With the same kind of attention. Yeah, no rush, controlled movements, enjoying the movements. Good, and then we pull the knee forward one more time. Give yourself space if needed, step the foot through, walk the foot forward, drop the hips deep. Stay on the fingertips and one more time, circle around that ankle, really opening up the hip joints. Good. And we circle the second way around. Remember if your right knee is grinding into the ground, feel free to use some cushioning, your mat folded or a blanket or a cushion. And then activate the legs, activate the pelvic floor, reach the upper body up for your Anjaniyasana, arms alongside the ears, fingertips go up to the sky, settle into the pose. Good, inhale, reach the fingers up. And exhale, interlace the fingers behind the back, one finger further as we have before. Draw the finger or the shoulder blades together, open up the chest, breathe into that space. Try not just dropping passively into your hips, even if you're flexible. Keep the legs active. Good. And then on your inhale, send the arms up one more time. And exhale, place the hands down to the ground, tuck the right toes under. This time we lift the knee off the ground and we step back into our first downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Shanasana. And we take a moment, you can walk the legs. So you bring the heels alternately down towards the ground, softening out the back of the legs, the knees. Make sure your fingers are spread wide, insides of the elbows pointing rather forward, upper arms rotated outwards, away from the ears. Your head is soft, your neck is soft, your jaw is soft. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Let it go through the mouth. Bend the knees a bit more, send the hips up. Find some stillness in your downward facing dog. Good. And then come onto the tiptoes, we roll forward, ripple the spine. Inhale, come into your high plank, shoulders over wrists. Make sure you have a nice distance between hands and feet. Exhale, bend the knees, come back into your downward facing dog. Again, like a wave. Inhale, roll forward, you can think cat back. And exhale, bending the knees, leading up with the hips, downward facing dog. One more. Inhale, roll forward. A big wave of the ocean. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, roll forward into your plank. Exhale, send the knees down. Drop the chin and the chest between the hands. Good. Let's stay. Take a deep inhale. And a long exhale. Good. Point the toes and then ripple the spine forward, roll up into a small cobra inhale. 
and exhale, tuck the toes over the knees, come into your downward facing dog, exhale. Inhale, lift your right leg up into the sky, three-legged dog. Exhale, pull the knee forward into the chest and step the foot through. Inhale, come to the top of the mat, you can come into the fingertips, lengthen your spine and half forward fold. And exhale, fold all the way down, deep forward fold. We come to standing, inhale, reach the arms up over the side, gather breath and energy. And then on the exhale, take the hands in front of the heart center in your Tadasana. Let's take a deep inhale here. Exhale, arrive, find stability. And let's keep flowing, inhale, reach the arms over the side, look up to your thumbs. And exhale through the center, bend the knees, come into your deep forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, send the heart forward, flat back, Arda. And exhale, step into a plank pose. Inhale here. And exhale, send the knees down, and this time without arching the back in one straight line, keep the elbows in, lay onto the belly. Point the toes, inhale, offer your heart, Cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog, come back. Take a deep inhale. Long exhale, left leg up to the sky, inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, big step forward between the hands. The right foot will follow on the inhale, half forward fold, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, fold all the way down. To standing, inhale, reach it up, big movement. And exhale, hands in front of the heart, center, Tadasana. We go through Surya B, inhale, sit deep for your chair pose, send the hips back, activate the pelvic floor and the core. And exhale, come through the center, maybe hands next to the feet, Uttanasana. Inhale, half lift onto the fingertips or onto the shins. Exhale, step back, plank pose. Inhale here. And exhale, lower with the knees or maybe without now, halfway, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale in your cobra if you wish, or up dog, Urdhva Mukha. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your right leg up into the sky. Exhale, big step forward between the hands, this time high lunge, warrior one variation. Inhale, stand up, sweep the arms up. And exhale, release the shoulders down. Soften your face, your jaw, create space. Inhale. Stay for the exhale, feel your legs activate. Inhale here. And exhale, one vinyasa, bring the hands down, step back, lower all the way or half with a lot of control. Leg through water, inhale, open up the chest. And exhale, come back, downward facing dog. Left leg, inhale, reach the leg up. Exhale, big step forward between the hands. Inhale, upper body comes up, high lunge, arms alongside the ears. And exhale, settle into the pose. Strong legs. Pull the left hip back, send the right one forward. And let the upper body just float up. Good. Inhale one more time here. And on your exhale, come down one vinyasa. Or you can always skip and go directly into your dog. Or take a child's pose like we opened our practice today. Take a deep inhale in your dog and sigh it out. And then come onto the tiptoes. Exhaling, bend the knees, look forward. You could step or lightly hop to the top of your mat for your half forward fold. And on your exhale, fold deep. We go through the chair, hips come back, upper body floats up. And exhale, hands in front of the heart center, Tadasana. Take a deep breath in and a long breath out. Feel the energy rushing through the body now.
and then prepare. We go again through our chair. Inhale, sit deep, bring the hips back. And on the exhale, fold forward, deep forward fold. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, step or hop back for your vinyasa or go into your down dog. We will meet there. Inhale, maybe through your back bend if you chose the flow. And exhale, downward facing dog. Now inhale the right leg up into the sky. Exhale, pull the knee forward, step the foot through. This time, circle the left heel down all the way, warrior two. The left arm pulls you up, arms parallel to the ground. Your back foot is parallel to the short side of the mat. Front knee is over your ankle. Now bring the table on down, lift your pubic bone up, rotate your thighs out and now feel the insides of your legs working, feel the groins opening, your arms are strong but shoulders relaxed, gaze over your front hand, very good, check one more time, your heart is over your hips, your head is over your heart, your spine is long. Now with the strong foundation, let's find some flow, on the inhale open up the heart, tilt the palms to face up to the sky. And then exhale round through the upper back, just slightly bring the backs of the hands to point down. And then again, open up on the inhale. And exhale, close the shoulders round forward. One more inhale, create space. And exhale, round down. Now again, inhale, open up the arms, the insides of the elbows pointing up. And exhale, bring only the palms to face down. Feel that space in your chest. And then inhale, lean back for your peaceful warrior. And exhale, move on to your side angle. So right forearm onto the right thigh, or maybe you move further onto your proper, onto the ground. Pull that left arm forward. Don't collapse into your right shoulder, but create space. Tilt the heart to point upwards to the sky. Breathe, feel the whole side body opening. Good. One more breath here. And then look down to the ground, press into the feet, inhale, come back up into your warrior two. And on the exhale, straighten the front leg, turn the right toes forward as well. Take the hands into your hips, your outside edges of the feet are parallel, lift the heart up. And on the exhale, come forward. Now we're hinging from the hips like we do in forward fold. You can bend the knees, bring the fingertips underneath the shoulders, lengthen through the spine like half forward fold, and then exhale, fold all the way down. Now show it from the side just in case. Make sure you're not rounding and pushing through the back, but you're bending the knees as much as necessary so you can tilt forward from the hips. You release the head down. The hands are under the shoulders or maybe even right next to the feet. And then we stay here for a moment. Rotate your th thighs inwards now towards each other, kind of as if you wanted to spread your sits bones away from each other. And again, exhale all the way from that lower belly. You feel how that creates some space. Good. And then on your next inhale, come onto the fingertips. And then turn the toes out to both sides. We begin to walk the hands towards the left foot, bending the left knee, straightening the right one. And then we move over to the second side. And we do this a couple of times. We're trying to go a bit lower each time. So when I'm towards the left leg, I'm starting to release the right toe, straightening that leg. When I move over to the right foot, that left leg straightens and the toes are maybe pointing out. Do this a couple of more times, just preparing the hips before we go a little bit deeper. Good. And the next time you're over at the left foot, stay. Turn the right toes up for Skandasana. Maybe you can lower the hips down. Option to release the hands. Option to bind for the ones who are practicing this at home. Or you just stay here where you are. You feel that opening either way. See where you can stay for a moment. Try and lengthen through the spine if you can. And breathe. Good. Now in your mind, I want you to imagine that you're going gracefully into a warrior two. 
So see yourself coming up on the inhale and on the exhale, moving into your warrior two. You can use your hands for this or strong legs. On the inhale, come back up. Exhale, right toes forward, warrior two. Good, float backwards, inhale, peaceful warrior. And then on the exhale, windmill the hands down to frame the front foot, release the left heel. Inhale, step back, plank or down dog. Exhale, vinyasa, or take a break in your dog or in your child. If you're flowing, inhale, open up the chest, and exhale, come into your downward facing dog. Good, take a deep inhale. Side out through the mouth, exhale. Left leg up into the sky. Exhale, big step forward between the hands. Now the right heel comes down. The right arm pulls us up for our warrior two. Arms parallel to the ground. Stay where you are. I will just turn around. So again, your front leg, the left leg is in a right angle. Right foot is kind of turned inward. And we're lowering the tailbone down. We pull the feet towards each other on the mat so much that we can really feel the insides of the legs working. The pelvic floor pulls up, lengthens us up through the spine. Good. And then again, with this stable foundation here, we want to find some expression in the upper body. So inhale, lift the heart, rotate the arms open to the sky. And exhale, close the shoulders, palms face up the other way around. Inhale, take the heart along, open the upper back. And exhale, rotate the shoulders forward and down. Good, one more, inhale. Exhale. Last one, inhale. We stay with a long spine with the shoulders open. Exhale, only bring the hands down. Inhale, peaceful warrior, lean back. It's kind of like a dance. And exhale, float through the warrior two into your side angle and pull the right arm over your ear. Choose the same variation as you did on the first side. Try not collapsing in that lower shoulder, activating the legs, keeping the chest wide. Maybe look up to the sky. Breathe. Good. Last deep breath here. And then look down to the ground, press into the feet, inhale, come back up. And exhale, straighten that front leg, turn the toes in. This time, interlace the fingers behind the back. Inhale, open up the chest. And we go all the way down into the forward fold, bending the knees generously to create space for the back. The crown of the head drops down to the ground. The hands fall over the head forward. And again, we're not forcing anything. So when your hands stay further back, that's fine. If it's too much for your shoulders, just release the hands like we did on the side one. And then we stay for a moment and I want to invite you to focus on the flow of your breath. How it moves through the body, how it changes the pose. We take one more deep breath here. And then you take your hands toward your bum and just release the hands over the sides so they land underneath you again. Reach the heart forward like half forward fold. And again, we begin walking from side to side for our skandasana on the second side. But again, we want to move into there slowly. So let's do a couple of these moving from side to side, preparing the hip joints, the insides of the thighs. Just gradually going a little bit deeper with every round. And then once you're over at the right foot again, so at the back of your mat, See where you want to stay. You can be up here, that's great. You can be a bit lower. Maybe you can even release the hands. Maybe you can even bind whatever works for you today. Just wherever you reached, try and stay and not change or fidget. And just observe the breath for a moment. Again, imagine where you want to go. You want to go towards your warrior two, towards the top of your mat. Your left foot will be forward. So on the inhale, you strengthen the legs, you stand up, and on the exhale, you bend the left leg. Let's do that. Inhale, come up. And exhale, warrior two. Inhale, flow backwards, peaceful warrior. 
And exhale, windmill the hands down, release the right heel. Step back, inhale, plank pose. Exhale, flow or vinyasa, through your vinyasa or down dog, chai's pose, whatever works for you. Good, in your down dog, take a deep breath in and a long breath out. And then on the inhale, come onto the tiptoes. Exhale, bend the knees, look forward. You can walk, step or hop to the top of your mat for half forward fold. And on the exhale, fold all the way down. We go through the chair, inhale, sit deep for your chair pose, arms up. And exhale, come to standing. Tadasana, mountain pose. Take the hands in front of the heart. Just take a moment to breathe. Take a moment to feel the energy that flows through the body. And then make one big step with either foot that allows you to still see the screen. We will come into a wide-legged stance. And again, we turn the toes out and we sit deep this time. So it's kind of like a double warrior two in this kind of goddess stance here, how they call it. So the knees are kind of in a right angle. The toes are pointing out just as much so you can keep your balance. And you place your hands on your thighs, reach up through the spine. And we sit a little bit lower into the hips. Very good. Nice. Now inhale again, reach up through the spine. Exhale, twist the upper body over to the right side. Look over the right shoulder, left shoulder comes forward. Inhale, come back to center. And exhale, change the side. Good. Let's do it a couple of times. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist, very energetic pose. Let's do one more round. Inhale to the center. Exhale, twist. Inhale to center. Exhale, good. Inhale, come back to the center. Make sure you have a good stance and then release the arms over the side, reach up to the sky and then take the hands in front of the heart center, maybe sit a bit lower. You can stay or maybe you can come onto the balls of the feet, release the heels. Now really feel the insides of your legs working, the groins. Let's stay for two more. Feel that heat rushing through the lower body. Last one, inhale. And exhale, release. Good. Inhale, stand up. And exhale, step to the top of your mat in your Tadasana. Good. Give your legs a little bit of a shake. Roll the shoulders up. Inhale. And exhale, back and down. With this energy, let the arms rise up. Inhale, arms over the side. Exhale, fold through the center. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, step back or hop back. You can choose a vinyasa or directly come into your downward facing dog. We'll meet here, take your time. To finish your flow and then walk the hands towards each other. Once you arrived, reach the right leg up. And then on the exhale, pull the knee forward. And this time we step the right foot onto the outside of the right hand. Knee over ankle and we bring the left knee down. Now we're here, send the heart forward. Maybe this is plenty for you today in this lizard pose. Maybe you have some space and you walk the hands a bit forward. Optionally, come onto a prop or onto the ground with your forearms. If you still want a little bit more, you could tuck the toes and release the knee off the ground. Please remember they're all variations of the same pose. So whatever works for you today, just stay there. Maybe it's up here, maybe it's lower. What we want is to open the groins. We're often so stiff in the hips, sitting a lot or even walking, running, biking. We're always using that area. And so we want to allow for some time for this area to open up, to release any tension that is stored there. So send your breath into the area where you feel lengthening, opening, Good. Deep breaths. 
And then if you've walked your hands forward, come back onto the hands and bring the hands under the shoulders, come onto the fingertips. Let's move a bit from side to side and begin to drop that right knee towards the side. So we kind of roll onto the outside edge of the right foot. I will show again the other side. You stay where you are just so you really get an impression of what we're doing just in case this is new. And we want to prepare the ankle and the knee and the hip joint to see if that feels good. If that's okay, stay here. If this is too much, keep the foot the way it was. And then once you found a nice angle for your foot and your knee, you bring the left hand underneath the left shoulder, you open up the right arm up to the sky, shoulders are stacked, and you have the choice to stay here or bring the right hand into the right hip, open up the shoulders and the chest more, and just maybe Bend the back leg and grab a hold of the foot with your right hand. This would be a way to get into the right outer hip and to stretch the left front of the groin and the quad. So this could be a little bit intense. Just see how it goes. Don't force anything. Remember these qualities of letting go, of enjoying. And just try and be present. And if this is not for you today, just stay in the previous variation, whatever it is that works for you. Good. And then if you're holding the foot, don't just let go of it, but activate the back of the leg, flex the foot, place it down carefully, send the right arm up again, bring it over to the front, hands on the mat, shoulder width apart, tuck the left toes, lift the knee. Pull the foot closer so we have a nice stance and then bring the right foot back up into your three-legged dog. Now this time we bend the knee, heel towards the bum, the knee opens up, we open up the right groin, the arms keep equal weight, or carry equal weight, and you have the choice to stay or you drop the left the heel down for a wide thing. We bring the weight over to the left arm, but take your time, drop the right foot behind you, and you can bring the hips all the way down close to the ground, left leg is straightened, and then send the hips up, send the right arm over your ear for your wild thing, open the groins, open the chest, and you can stay, or you can do this dynamically like a dance, on the exhale, bringing the hip down, reaching the right hand towards the left foot without reaching it, and inhale, send it up again, opening up the chest. Let's do one more. If you chose this dynamic variation, send the hips down. Inhale, come back into your wild thing. Good. Last breath here. And then come back to the center, flip over into your plank pose. Choose a dog, a vinyasa, or a chaz pose. Inhale through your cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Walk the hands together, thumbs touch, inhale, lift the left leg up, exhale, big step forward, you can always give yourself space, come onto the fingertips, walk the foot forward, place the knee down, at least to find your pose, make sure your front leg is perpendicular to the floor of the lower leg, and again, choose, either stay or maybe go a bit deeper, whatever works for you today, kind of see if the second side can be stimulated, the same variation as the first side, but if that doesn't work, then just pick another variation. And you just stay where you are and you breathe. Try not to tense up in your face or in your thoughts. Just observe the flow of breath that goes in and out through the body. Good. If you've chosen a lower variation, begin to walk your hands back underneath the shoulders, right knee down if you have lifted it. And then come into the fingertips again. We move from side to side. First of all, preparing, starting to drop that left knee out towards the side, coming onto the outside edge of the foot. Make sure that's okay for your ankle. You can do the same pose also with the foot down. So see if you can arrive here in your left outer hip. Right hand underneath the right shoulder, the back toes can be placed down or tucked, whatever is better for your knee. Left arm can go up, left hand can go into the hip, and you can open up the chest a little bit more. A small back bend here. 
Option would be back leg bended, grabbing hold of the foot. And again, see how the second side feels. It could be very different. Don't strain, don't force. Just breathe and allow yourself to experience this practice without judgment. So no matter if this is very easy for you or very challenging, just experience it, just observe it. Don't give any value to it, don't judge anything. And then again, don't just drop the foot, but place it down with care. Send the left arm up, left hand underneath the left shoulder. Nice stance here of the hands, shoulder width. Lift the right knee, bring the foot even a bit closer. This will give you a nice stance. You can turn the left toes out. This will make it a bit easier to lift that leg up into your three-legged dog. If you need to, you can hop the right foot into the right position and then open up the left leg for a nice scorpion leg. The groin opens, the knee points up. And again, you can just stay here. This is a lovely pose. Or just maybe you pivot the right heel down and you come into your white thing. Slowly come onto the right hand. You can keep the left fingertips even down till the left foot is on the ground. And then drop the hips before you send them up. Open up the chest, left arm over your ear. You can stay here or just maybe dynamically like a dance. Exhale, bring the hips down. And inhale, open up through the groins and the chest. Very good. Exhale, come down only if you wish. And inhale, float up, open up. Good, last one. Exhale, bring it down. And then inhale, open up. Good, last breath here, inhale. And exhale and you come back with care, flipping back over. You can drop the hips, this will make it easier. Come into your plank pose, choose a vinyasa, a dog or a child's pose. Good job. Take a deep inhale and a long exhale. And walk the hands together one more time. So the tips of the thumbs are touching and you can either walk, step or take a light hop onto the outside of your hands with your feet. So we're coming into Malasana, into a yogic squat. Send the hips between the heels. Take your hands together in front of the heart center. Maybe you need some props under your heels. Maybe they're hovering, that would be fine. Or you can bring props underneath your bum. And whenever you found your position, then open up through the spine. Open up through the chest and settle into this pose. Breathe all the way down into the lower abdomen, into your groins. Fill yourself with fresh energy. And allow this feeling of letting go on every exhale. Take two more deep breaths here. Maybe sigh the last one out through the lips, letting go. And then release the hands, bring the fingertips behind you, sit down on your bum. And we bring the soles of the feet to touch. And we open the soles of the feet a little bit as if we were opening a book. But we're bringing the feet actually further away from us. You can take out a little bit of your flesh towards the back so you can feel your sits bones on the ground. And then we will fold forward in a very soft manner. So I want you to open up your hands towards the sky in a gesture of receiving, of surrender, so you're withstanding any tendency to pull the feet or do anything else with the hands. And just slowly fold forward over your legs, kind of as if you wanted to bring your forehead down towards the soles of your feet. And even if you're much further up, it doesn't quite matter. We don't want to put any pressure now. We want to sink deep into the hips. We're also opening up the spine here. So make sure you relax the neck. You don't put any force, any pressure. And instead, we take a moment to arrive here. You can close the eyes, rest the gaze, and scan through the body. See if you're still holding any tension somewhere, maybe 
and the groins and the knees and the neck. And if you encounter any areas of tension, just observe them for a little moment and see why they're there. Sometimes we're still holding on to some tension because we feel like we need to protect ourselves. And that's good. Our body's taking care of us. But just maybe some of that tension is not necessary. Maybe we can allow for it to become a bit softer, to gradually dissolve. To kind of just allow ourselves to let go a little bit. And just kind of trust that it will be totally fine if we give up our resistance, if we stop holding on, if we stop blocking. Let's take another couple of deep breaths here. Take a last deep one in through the nose. Maybe slide out through the mouth. Good. And then place your hands down towards the ground so you can help yourself by walking the hands towards the body, lifting up through the spine. Maybe take your hands, bring them onto the outside of the knees and bring the knees together after this intense hip opening. Stand the feet up, lean onto your hands and just drop the knees a bit from side to side in a windshield sweeper kind of motion to release the groins. Very good. And then from here, make sure you have your prop handy. If it's a block, that would be great. If it's a blanket, make sure it's a little bit thicker than the one that I have here. And just make sure you have it handy when you are on your back. We're gonna lay down from here. You can use your hands for support. And then once you're on the ground with your back, bring the feet really close towards your bum. We're going into a shoulder bridge. We're going a couple of times in a dynamic motion, and then we will use our prop. So you press the table and down, you press the lower back into the mat, and then from there, leading on, you lift the table and in vertebra by vertebra off the ground, take the arms alongside with this movement all the way until they're next to your ears. And on your exhale, bring the spine down vertebra by vertebra and bring the arms alongside this movement. Let's do this three more times. Inhale, and this is really a very energetic movement, charging us up. It's like Recharging batteries on the exhale, come back down. Good. Inhale like a wave of the ocean, flow like water. And exhale, bring it back down. Inhale, come back up. And then stay lifted in your hips and only bring the arms back on the exhale. Now, if you have your prop, use it. If you don't have one, you can just stay either way. You could interlace the fingers if you want it. If you have a prop, you can place it on a height that is comfortable for you under your sacrum. So it could be very low, it could be rather high. What you want is that you have the hips elevated over your heart and that you have a nice little opening of the groins, but your lower back should feel comfortable. Don't put your prop into your spine or into your tailbone, but underneath your pelvic bone where it's a bit thicker. This should be very comfortable. And again, if you don't have a prop, it's fine. Just engage the muscles a bit more. And then release the arms alongside the body or interlace the fingers. And then we'll stay here for a couple of breaths. Giving some space to our groins, to our lower abdomen, which we've stimulated a lot in this practice today. And this also serves as a little bit of an inversion today, elevating our hips over our heart the very calming, soothing effect. So really try and breathe all the way down into the groins. Filling this area with new energy, washing away any remaining tension. So 
Good. Last deep breath. And then come on to the tiptoes so you can lift your pelvis just slightly. Remove your prop, or even if you didn't have one, just roll slowly down vertebra by vertebra, taking your time, noticing each point that touches the ground until you're all the way on the mat and then walk your feet out towards the edges of the mat. Drop the knees to the center, place your palms on your lower abdomen, your pelvic area, and just take a moment to observe. And then extend your arms out to the sides. Drop your knees one more time from side to side like a windshield sweeper. As we did when we were sitting, keeping the distance between the feet nice and wide. And then when both knees are on the left side, you could optionally bring the left foot on top of the right knee or you just stay where you are. Just allowing for some relaxation of the hips groins of the spine, the belly. Good. Feel free to close the eyes if you haven't yet. You should be totally able to follow my voice. Really focus on the body. Release the left foot if you've placed it on top of the knee. Bring both knees over to the right side. Drop them over. Just leave them the way they are or maybe place the right ankle on top of the left knee. Just to intensify the stretch very gently. It's a very soft pose here, no strain. Good, and then release. Bring the knees back to the center and then one knee after the other. Take them up into your chest. Hug the lower legs, press that lower belly into the ground. Roll a bit from side to side. Massaging the lower back against the ground. And then grab a hold of one knee with each hand and circle the knees away from each other. Big circles and you can do this super slow. Really one last time, relieving any tension in the groins, in the belly, in the back. Circle the other way around as well. And you can do this for a moment or you can choose any other movement or pose that you feel would benefit you now before we take a small moment of relaxation. So if there's anything, a happy baby, a twist or anything that your body needs now, listen to its impulses, give it what it needs. Wiggle anything that needs to be loosened, stretch anything that needs space. And then slowly, slowly take your time and stretch out on the mat. Let's take a little moment of Shavasana. It won't be too long, but allow yourself to relax. Allow your body to absorb all the benefits of this energetic practice. So really give space to your legs, drop the feet out so your groins can get some space and relax. Arms out, palms facing to the sky, shoulders grounded. Head is heavy, your hips are heavy. We take a last deep breath in through the nose. And then we let it all go through the mouth. And with that, you let go of any breath control. No ujjayi breath. Breath froze naturally all by itself. The breath flows naturally all by itself. Nourishing you. Taking care of you. There's really nothing left to do. You can fully let go, relax. Enjoy this moment after your practice of full stillness, of presence. You don't have to engage with your thoughts. 
don't have to perform, you don't have to do anything. You can just fully let go, enjoy in your Shavasana. And then slowly bring movement back into small places to your fingers, your toes, your wrists, your ankles, bit by bit. Awaken the body. Take a deep breath. Stretch out and enliven the body. Keeping the eyes closed, bend the knees and roll onto one side. One more time, just give yourself a little loving hug and stay present with yourself, with your body. Honor this connection that you made today with your body. Thank yourself for listening to your body's needs and doing something good for your well-being today. And slowly press the upper hand into the ground over the side. Come into an upright seat. Keep your eyes closed just for a little moment. Lengthen up through the spine and take your palms together in front of the heart center in a gesture of gratitude. Indulge in this feeling of presence, of joy, of relaxation after your practice. Thank yourself for taking the time for your practice and say thanks for the life that flows through you. And when you're ready, slowly open your eyes. Thank you so much for your practice. I hope you feel light, free, and beautiful. Have a look at my other chakra related videos and maybe take a moment to do the guided meditation for the Sakra Chakra that will reinforce the qualities that we practice today here on our yoga mat. I will link the related videos in the end screen and in the description box below and I would be happy to receive your feedback. Please leave me a comment, let me know how you felt after this class. And then have a wonderful day and come back soon for our next practice together.